Hello and thanks for tuning in. I'm Daniel Kovach and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an automated trading strategy using the NinjaTrader platform. We're going to code it, backtest it, and optimize it. The strategy I've picked to show you leverages the Simple Moving Average Indicator or the SMA. Honestly, it sucks. Everybody knows that it sucks. But it's a good kind of hello world example to show you the NinjaTrader functionality. I'm also going to introduce some tips and tricks to try to make the SMA strategy suck less. Let's get started. Let's click on the NinjaTrader icon and wait for Windows to fire up the application. Next, we can go ahead and give NinjaTrader the permissions to talk to the internet. And let's create a new strategy. So go to Tools. Find new ninja script and go to strategy. This is going to bring up a nice graphic user interface to abstract a lot of the coding process from us. So we click next, we can enter a title, we're going to call it tutorial SMA. We can also enter a description, I'm just going to call that uh, obligatory SMA strategy. Also, notice that calculate on bar close is left checked. We're going to leave that at default. So go ahead and click next. And now we can enter some parameters to our strategy. First, we're going to enter the fast SMA and set the default value to say four. Next, we want to enter the slow SMA because in our strategy, we're going to compare these two. So we enter the name slow SMA this time, we're going to increase this period to 14, or two weeks. Now we can also set minimum values, uh, I'll say 3 and 5 respectively. We can set maximum values in the code. We can create a description for each parameter, which is always helpful. It's always nice to be as descriptive as possible in your programming. For the first parameter, I can simply describe that as the window size for the fast SMA. As for the second parameter, you guessed it, I can describe that as the window size for the slow SMA. After that, we can continue with the graphic user interface if we want to by clicking next, but we're just going to dive in and start coding. To do that, you just go ahead and click unlock code. NinjaTrader is going to ask us if we're sure because at this point, we can't go back to the editor. This is the actual code. It's C-sharp code that NinjaTrader has rebranded as NinjaScript. There are also certain sections that are nicely organized, such as the variable section, which contains information like the variables we set in the beginning, and also the properties section, which goes into a little bit more of the object-oriented nature of this script. First, we'll take a look at the initialize function. This is what happens when the strategy starts. This is where you can set all kinds of parameters that apply to the entire strategy globally. In any strategy, it's very important to set stop losses and profit targets. So the first thing we'll do is do just that. We'll set a stop loss at 8%. Notice the first argument is calculation mode. We're going to set that to percent. And the second argument is a double digit number representing the value set to 0.08. Next, we'll go ahead and set a profit target. Again, calculation mode dot percent is our first argument. And this time, we'll set that to 12% or 0.12. Now we can move on to the actual coding of the strategy. That's done in the on bar update function, which, as the name suggests, is called every time the bar updates. What we want to do is compare the fast SMA to the slow SMA. What we're going to do is use an if statement. Inside the if statement, we're going to make the comparison between the fast and slow SMA. Again, if we forgot what we called our parameter, we can go to the variable section and see the name we gave it in the very beginning. We want to compare the values right now, so we use the square bracket zero to indicate that. And we want the fast SMA to be greater than the slow SMA. This is going to be our condition for going long. To do this, let's call the enterLong function and enter the default quantity as the desired amount to trade. You can obviously specify any specific value you'd like. After we've finished, we can go ahead and close our if statement 
and start a new one for the shorting condition. So again, what we're going to want to do is within this if statement, compare the fast SMA to the slow SMA. And this time, our shorting condition is going to be whether the fast SMA is less than the slow SMA. Similarly, as we called enter long, we can also call the function enter short at the default quantity. Of course, you can enter whatever value you like. Now let's compile the strategy. What compilation does is it takes the human readable code that we've written and turns it into machine code that NinjaTrader can implement. And we see a rather disagreeable error message. So let's try to figure out what we did wrong. It looks like we forgot to specify the time at which to compare the slow SMA. So let's go ahead and add that in again using the square brackets and try to compile. This time we've seen no errors. So let's go ahead and test the strategy out. We can do that by going to File, New, and Strategy Analyzer. This is going to give us all the options we need to backtest and optimize our strategy. On the left, we select the instrument or the thing we want to trade. Go ahead and right click and select Backtest on Disney. And we can go ahead and get to the drop down menu and select our tutorial SMA. Notice that we have a lot of parameters. We're going to leave the other ones at default and select the type day data and enter in the date starting at 2008 going all the way up to the present. Click run back test and wait for a second and as you see as promised the SMA strategy sucks. It's lost money for us. Let's go ahead and select a different instrument. Now let's choose everybody's golden boy Apple. Again, right click and select back test, leave the same parameters and go ahead and run the back test. Again, we've lost money. So what do we do? Well, we can go up to Apple again and this time select optimize. This is going to allow us to specify a range for our parameters over which to test the strategy and determine optimal conditions for that particular instrument. For the fast SMA, I've chosen the minimum value to be 3 and the maximum value to be 7. For the slow SMA, let's start at 10 and end at 28. Let's leave everything else at default for now, but if we want, we can scroll down and see that NinjaTrader gives us quite a bit of options. Go ahead and click Run Optimization to actually run the strategy, and as you see, virtually instantaneously we get the results. For more parameters, obviously this optimization process is going to take longer. Click the Optimizer tab to see the details on each of the runs. By default, NinjaTrader chooses the 10 best. There is another mode of optimization which uses a genetic algorithm. Uh, that particular one is handy for when you have a lot of different parameters and you don't want to run them all by brute force. So again, if we go to Apple and Optimize, we can scroll down and where it says Optimizer, choose Genetic. This opens up a new world of parameters for us which we're going to leave at default. Click Run Optimization and we see again virtually instantaneously we obtain our results. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the results are still bad. So what can we do? Is there anything that can improve these abysmal results? It turns out that there is and that brings us to the first of my tips and tricks. What we're going to do is consult another indicator. This one's called the RSI. Let's jump right back into our code and implement it. What I want to do is look at the RSI even before I get to the long or short conditions. What I'll do is I'll add an if statement at the beginning of the function to make sure that that gets triggered first. What I want to do is compare the RSI, window size, slow SMA, and smoothness 3 at the current bar or bracket 0. I want to make sure that that's greater than 30. I also want to take the RSI with the same parameters, window size, slow SMA, Smoothness 3, it's pretty much a default, uh, at the current bar. And I want to make sure that that's less than 70. This will keep us out of trades where the instrument is overbought. Let's also indent the body of the if statement corresponding to the RSI. That's the code that comes inside of it. What that does is it just makes our code more readable and consistent. Now let's go ahead and add some code comments. Comments are very important for readability and maintainability of our code later. They're prefixed by two forward slashes, followed by a brief description of whatever's going on. So let's go ahead and add one above the first if statement, basically telling us why it's there. 
Likewise, we can add code comments for the two if statements that follow in the body, the long and short conditions respectively. Don't forget that we need to compile the code, which is important so that NinjaTrader can actually use it. And luckily, we did not encounter any errors. So let's go ahead and go back to our strategy analyzer and select Apple again, then select Optimize as we did before. We can see that the strategy is still performing fairly poorly. We could try one more time to improve this strategy by adding something called the LLR or Line of Least Resistance. What this amounts to is adding a secondary condition to our long and short criteria. For our long criteria, what we want to do is compare the close of today to the high of two days ago. If the close is greater than the high of two days ago, what this gives us an indication of is a potential trend forming. We can apply this principle to shorting as well. Let's go ahead and add a secondary condition into our shorting criteria. This time, we want to compare the close of today to the low of two days ago. And we want the close to be lower than the low of two days ago. Notice the difference in the LLR condition for going long and going short. What we want to do is establish a directional conviction either going up or going down. Again, that high is two days ago, not today. Let's just take a brief look at the code before we compile. Everything else looks good. So go ahead and compile and let's test out our strategy once again. Here I've run the optimizer on the strategy as we did before and we see that we're actually making money for once. Notice that the drawdowns are still pretty bad. Again, this is the best result that our optimizer could produce. If we want to see some of the other results, we simply click the optimizer tab and we can scroll through them and get some details. You can get some more details about each run by right clicking and selecting performance viewer. As we see, there's many options, so let's just go ahead and click on the chart. And what that shows us is when we entered and exited each trade and whether that was profitable or not. That's indicated by a green line for when the trade was profitable and indicated by a red line for when we lost money. And that's it for today's tutorial on creating an automated trading strategy using the NinjaTrader platform. We covered the coding of the strategy, the backtesting of the strategy, and optimizing it. We introduced some improvements that could be made to the otherwise abysmal SMA strategy. These included the RSI and the LLR. We did all this in less than 15 minutes. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos on quantitative finance using NinjaTrader platform or data mining using R.